My name is Charlie Booth. I'm a heritage officer and archivist at Robert Walsh Designs, which means I look after the company's story, Robert Walsh's archive, and help ensure the brand legacy continues. Robert Radford Walsh was a renowned silversmith and industrial designer who studied silversmithing at the Royal College of Arts. Later in his three-year course at the Royal College, he evolved his practice to include stainless steel design, so design for manufacture. That last year, he did a lot of research in Scandinavia, in fact, writing his thesis on the design and production of stainless steel tableware. And in fact, his last two final pieces were handmade prototypes, sat in chrome plated to look as though they might have that Scandinavian brush stainless steel finish. And in fact, one of these pieces, a three-part vegetable dish, was bought by J&J Wigan, who owned Old Hall tableware in the Midlands. They offered Robert a design consultancy straight from college. And as part of that, he had to base himself somewhere close by. In terms of his contract was that he needed to visit their works at least once a week. And so, having investigated various possibilities, the old silk mill in Chipping Camden was suggested to him, actually by local furniture designer Gordon Russell. Now, Robert came with a view to perhaps taking on a corner of the Hearts workshop, not having to buy his own tools and using the section. But at the same time as he came to visit the Hearts, he walked up into the old silk mill and had a look around. It was a derelict space, it hadn't been used probably since about the 1930s. So he decided he would rent the top floor of the old silk mill and he created himself a studio and workshop. Sometimes when one feels a bit low and can't think of, you know, a direction to be pursuing, it's quite often helpful just to have a stroll around up here and look at these surprising collections of designs of years gone by. It was from this building that Robert combined silver commissions and industrial design from 1955, establishing himself as one of the country's leading industrial designers and designers of modern stainless steel cutlery and tableware. And by 1958, he was joined by a silversmith and a friend from Birmingham College of Art, John Nimbury, who he worked with for the rest of his career. He became the craftsman chiefly responsible, really, for making most of the silver pieces for Robert and helping with 3D models of product design, as well as technical drawing. Once he had his drawing board set up, there's a really lovely quote from a thesis actually where he, he sort of said to be sitting down at his drawing board with a blank sheet of paper, a brand new sharpened pencil, and thinking, what now? Of course, we know what happened next because of the wonderful archive which he built up. Well, I'm terribly fortunate having this long, rambling old attic, the graveyard of all the old designs which have developed over the years. I don't think he kept an archive from the very first days thinking that this would be something that we would be using or that he would be referring back to. Sometimes 20, 30 years have passed and one picks up a design which started life um, and failed for one reason or another. It was just organic creation, it was the stuff of life. Sketchbooks, drawings, prototypes, models. It's quite often helpful just to have a stroll around up here and look at these surprising collection of designs of years gone by. I went up into the attic, into the archive, and spent two weeks packing and boxing Robert's collection. I was immersed in his history. Once we packed the collection in the attic, we were moving it because the building was being renovated and the attic was going to be removed. I remember thinking those first two weeks that actually what we were removing was the company's memory. We were taking away everything that had been above their heads for the last 60 years. And actually what happened over the course of the next year's cataloguing project was that that memory became stronger because by cataloguing it, by indexing it and feeding it into an electronic database, it became searchable, cross-referenced. Through the course of that year and the process of cataloguing, we were able to make many more connections and discover much more about the collection than the company had ever known. So from that, a role was created, the role of heritage officer, to help the company make use of the collections. So from those early days in the attic, the storage of the heritage collections has really moved on leaps and bounds. And the new store, whilst incredibly sterile as an environment compared to the attic, it will ensure the preservation and the future of the collections for many, many generations. And ensure that we're able to continue looking after them in the right way, allow the designers at the company to use them for many years to come, as well as perhaps opening them up and making an educational resource for the wider design community. And this is really the hope for the collections, that we're able to reach out with them now and tell the story more openly and to a wider audience. <laughs>